team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and in this video wow this off season i've been saying it all off season y'all been saying it all off season this off season has been very crazy uh it's had a lot of ups has a lot of downs and everything in between but hey it's all part of the process and the ravens they always keep it very very interesting but in this video I really wanted to hear from y'all. Well, I mean, I want to hear from y'all every single video. And, and y'all let your comments be known every single video, which we all appreciate because it's always very fun. The, the dialogue, the back and forth and whatnot. I appreciate it. So thank you for continuing to do that. Um, now, we've had a lot of conversations. And y'all know we could talk about it all day. But we've had a lot of conversations about the Ravens and the wide receiver position. Um, but I really wanted to hear from y'all to see exactly what y'all want the Ravens to do at the wide receiver position. Because I, I, there are always so many different points of view, so many different angles, so many different perspectives on what people want the Ravens to do. We talk about it on here. We talk about the possibilities of different guys that the Ravens have been interested in. <laughs> But a lot of those possibilities just, they ain't possible no more because those guys will end up going elsewhere. Um, but what would you like for the Ravens to do? Now, there's one side um, speaking about some different free agents. Well, you know what? Let's talk about, let's not talk about the free agents first. Because there's the side of people that are like, hey, let's roll with what we have. Let's roll with the guys that we've got right here, right now. Rashad Bateman. Devin DuVernay, James Prochet, Tylen Wallace, and undrafted rookie free agents, maybe some practice squad guys from last year, maybe Benjamin Victor may finally get a shot. That, that's how some people are feeling. And the people that feel that way, um, I can understand it because they're like, hey, we keep drafting all these guys, not giving them a shot. Why not do it now? Why not roll with what we have? Let's really see our guys' untapped potential. And that's an interesting point of view. The reason I say it's interesting because, and I, and I asked somebody this in the comment section yesterday, I said, would you really be willing to risk this season uh, on all that untapped potential, on those the guys that we have? Uh, because it's a lot of inexperience there. It's a lot of inexperience. And we know the only way for you to gain experience it's by gaining experience, by actually doing whatever it is that you don't have experience in. So how can you possibly get better if you're just sitting on the sideline? You're just riding pine, you're just sitting on the bench, you're just chilling. How can you get better that way? It's pretty much impossible. But for you to actually get better at something, you have to, have to you got to jump in the fire. So I could understand why people say, hey, let's just ride with our guys. But what if our guys aren't enough? Hey, what if they are enough? What if they're more than enough? So this is why that, that, that side of the fence when it comes to the wide receivers, I get it. I get it. I, I see what you're saying. Because um, with Rashad Bateman, I know a lot of people saying, oh, he's going to be our wide receiver one. And I think that's the expectation. He will still have to prove it, though. Um, and it's, he, it's looking like he got all the tools to be that guy. Uh, so, but now it's just a matter of putting it to, to the field consistently. Um, Rashad Baby show he can run every route in the book. Uh, he got hands. He can get some yak. He a little, little wiggly too now, man. Cause once he get the ball in the hand, you're like, y'all, y'all remember for the, for the longest when Rashad Bateman was catching everything that he caught went for a first down for the longest, man. Um, so Rashad Bateman is looking like he he, he gonna be nice, man. Um, but now it's just a matter of consistency from here on out. Consistency and opportunity. Uh, James Prochet, he's showing you like, hey. I, I don't drop anything. Dropping is not in my forte. That's not me. I You think I'm about to drop a pass? Nah, I'm, I'm good off of that. Ain't got all the speed in the world, but he did say in one of his live streams recently that he's trying to work on uh, improving his speed. So I like that. That's that's a good sign. That's a really good sign. Tylen Wallace. Um, Tylen Wallace, we didn't really get to see much from him last year. We did see that one catch where he broke them a couple tackles and ended up stumbling for a first down. We loved it. Um, but he, he was a rookie last year and didn't really get much time. Uh, but from what we saw from him in college, that boy can go up there and get it. And contested catches and yak, that's his thing. That's his thing. And that's something that we're missing on the Ravens. 
And with Devin Duvernay, um, Devin Duvernay, are the Ravens going to, like, let him actually be a wide receiver or just let him be a gadget or continue to have him just be a gadget guy? So if they could help him be a receiver, get him involved in the little screens. Actually, Ravens will have to start throwing screens more, too, not just against Miami. But get him involved in them screen passes so Devin Duvernay could do his thing after the catch. So, there, again, there, there's some potential there. It's there. Um, it's just a matter of Ravens really drawing it out of those guys. And then, of course, uh, with the undrafted rookie free agents that they signed uh, this offseason, well, there, there go those guys, too. Got the, and, and these giants. We still got some more guys to go over. Uh, but like the Devin Williams, big 6'5", go up and get it type of guy. Um, but he apparently he wasn't drafted because he got a lot of he had a lot of stuff going on off the field. Uh, some unfortunate circumstances and situations uh, that just it would it would mess with anybody's mind. The stuff that he had to go through and it would be huge distractions to anybody. Um, the stuff that he had to go through. Uh, so he could end up being one of those guys where it's like, hey, I, I should have been drafted. But situations and circumstances happen to where he wasn't. But now, hey, make the most of this opportunity. Makai Polk, another big guy. Go up and get it guy. Um, Amike Amezi. Mm. Ah, yeah, he's not with the Ravens anymore. I believe he's with the Panthers. So, yeah, he's gone. But anyway, um, so yeah, we that that would be the Ravens running away with who they have. Um, are you willing to bank on that, or would you want to bring in uh, somebody proven? Um, now, for the people who want to bring in somebody proven, who would you bring in? Who do you bring in? There's been a lot of talk about Julio Jones. Julio Jones, obvious Hall of Fame wide receiver. Julio Jones, somebody that um, <laughs> it's funny when. <laughs> It's funny whenever you um whenever you you hear about a player and the first thing that people say is mentor, uh, you, you already know oh that player like way past their prime man. When they start talking about the mentor, they are like oh yeah they, yeah 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 that, this is gonna be his, this older player. He he can get a younger player some game and whatnot, which is great, but you know they way past their prime. Now Julio man, Ravens were apparently interested in Julio last year too. But they didn't want to give up. Uh, what, would the, what the Titans got him for like a second round pick, something like that. Uh, but anyway, um, now he's a free agent, been sitting out there. Uh, big frame, wide receiver. He can catch. Well, he can drop sometimes too now. But uh, he can make some plays. But the thing about him, how's his body holding up? He has a long injury history. Uh, them hamstrings, they, they've they been going through it. Uh, Julio, he's been banged up a lot. Now, if he's healthy, he can definitely give you something. Like, and that would give Lamar a big catch radius wide receiver who knows the game and who's been literally in every single type of situation. He's played in literally every single type of game. So he has the experience that all the other guys lack. Um, and again, that's not a shot at the other guys Because again, how do you gain that experience Without gaining that experience But Julio Jones has been there And li literally done that So he's played in every single type of preseason game Regular season game Every type of playoff game And he's also played in the Super Bowl And not just played in it But made a huge impact in the Super Bowl So Julio he And he's been that guy before But again, injuries That's the biggest question mark there was a space yesterday um, where uh, one of my guys, Juice, he talked about the potential of adding a Julio Jones. Um, and he said we would just have to hope that he wouldn't get injured. He talked about the potential of adding a one Will Fuller. who There's been a lot of conversation about him having a deep threat to really replace Hollywood. Um, and, and Will Fuller, we know he is a deep threat. That is Will Fuller's thing. Will Fuller, a huge yak guy, go for the big catches. I remember there was one point where uh, with Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller. This dude wasn't catching nothing but like 50-yard touchdowns. Nothing but. And that's all Deshaun Watson would throw to him. It's like they were playing Madden or something. Because that's what I'd be doing. I'd be going for the deep shot at Madden all the time. But that's like all, that's all they were doing. And Will Fuller, that's his thing. Uh, but then his thing has also been missing a lot of time. Uh, but my guy Juicy was talking about it. He said, hey, well, if, if, if we sign a Julio Jones or if we sign a Will Fuller, we would just have to hope that they remain healthy. And I said, ooh, see, that's. That's the thing right there. If 
now not saying that people can't change because people can we know people's personalities can change um and you you can become a better person you can become a different person we know that but enough times uh if somebody shows you who they are you you need to accept that you need to accept that and i know um my aunt told me this a couple years ago something that my grandfather told her a long time ago if uh if somebody shows you who they are then you can't you can't get mad at that if you know what to expect from somebody's personality then when they show you their personality with what you should have expected don't get mad don't get upset because that should have been the expectation so what i what, i say all that to say this with a julio jones with a will fuller we know what they can do on the field but we know that they also see a lot of time off the field with injuries so we, we we also hoped we hoped last year even though we knew the history we hoped last year all right sammy watkins ravens adding sammy watkins okay cool we got another florida raven in the crib okay cool we know what he can do he got all the experience in the world and he's actually not even old but then we knew about the injury history we hoped all right we hope it'll be different we hope it'll be something that's not what it's been but yeah he already showed us who he was in previous teams and we knew what to expect from his previous teams. And then it happened with his current team, which was the Ravens. So when he got hurt, when he missed time, I don't think many people were surprised. But I don't think many people should have been upset either. Because it was an expectation going into the season. So, but then everybody else got hurt too. And it was like, oh, yikes. Anyway. Um, those have been two names that have been tossed around a lot. Um, Julio Jones and Will Fuller. I think those have been like the two hottest names recently. Um, T.Y. Hilton. Mm. T.Y. Hilton. Remember last year? Ra Ravens offered T.Y. Hilton that money. And T.Y. Hilton said, No. You think I'm about to go play in Baltimore? No. <laughs> no. So... I just and I I, I wasn't a fan of them adding Ty Hilton back then. I, I I wouldn't be now either. If they did it, oh, okay, cool. But I just that wouldn't be one of my first choices. Um, I was watching my guy uh, TTB uh, trust trust the bank. Uh, I was watching their video. Uh, I think yesterday, the day before yesterday, my guy Makana. Shout out to Makana uh, and Joshua too. Um, those two, they've been killing it. But he, McConnell was making some good points about T.Y. Hilton. And um, he talked about how with T.Y. Hilton with Andrew Luck, because uh, he said Andrew Luck was one of his favorite quarterbacks. He said watching him and watching T.Y. Hilton, he would have all these catches for like 50 yards, 52 yards, and he would have all these long, these long touchdown catches. Um, but then when his quarterback changed, we all know what happened with uh, with. Andrew Luck with that big retirement out of nowhere that wasn't even supposed to be dropped when he got dropped. Adam Schefter, hey, Adam Schefter over there spoiling people's stuff. Uh, but anyway, um, his his longest touchdown receptions, they start dropping. But then you got to look at the context, too. The, the the QB play changed a lot. He went from Andrew Luck to Phillip Rivers and, um, and Carson Wentz, too. So that changed a lot for him. But still, it's just, uh, it, it just, no, I, mm -mm, not for me, no. Mm -mm. And again, he'd he be getting banged up a lot too. But um, something that McConnell pointed out, which was a really good point too, again, about the mentorship, about being a leader. Because uh, he talked about how he, uh, T.Y. Hilton was the, the, the veteran uh, amongst a lot of young Colts wide receivers and helped bring them along like uh, Michael Pittman Jr., um, like a, uh, I think Zach Pascal, um, there's some more too, but I'm like, that's a, again, they go that, 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 that mentorship talk that, uh, so yeah, shout out to Ryan Tannehill, by the way. Anyway, um, so that's another guy that some people have been talking about and I'm like, oh, no, I, I'm not, that's no, not me. No, I'm not. No. Um, another name that I heard floated around yesterday in a space was actually Emmanuel Sanders. And I was like, oh, I did completely 
forgot about him, wasn't thinking about him. Um, that would be very Raven esque uh, to get. Because again, with the what what I think they're gonna do, y'all, y'all, what I want them to do, y'all, you know, I would want them to trade for somebody like a DK Metcalf. That would be the one that would be highest on my list. Would be a DK Metcalf. Um, Debo saying he'll be he'll be cool too. Uh, obviously, Debo he could play. He he be he be getting banged up a lot too now though. Um, but DK Metcalf, that's the the number one guy I would want them to trade for. I don't think they're going to, but I would love for them to do it. Um, but with the Ravens, what they usually do, stuff like this, like a lot of us will be thinking one thing, we'll be expecting one thing, we'll be thinking, okay, that, that's the guy for the, and then they hit you with a swerve. Then they go for somebody completely different. It's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's what I'm expecting. I mean, the obvious names that are very, would be ra very Raven-esque are Julio Jones. But it's like, mm, it just seemed like they... They're going to hit us with a swerve. Whoever that is, no clue. But anyway, Manuel Sanders was another interesting name um, that somebody brought up. Now, another name that is uh, very popular, um, Odell Beckham Jr. And Odell Beckham Jr., um, he is a name that's been floating around. Um, but it's like with Odell Beckham Jr., what would he really give you right now? Because he he begin excuse me he begin banged up a lot. But what would he give you right now? Nothing. I mean it's sort of like the the David Ajabo situation. Uh, he tore his Achilles I think in the Super Bowl. David Ajabo tore it at his pro day. Um, and right if if you brought I mean they obviously brought Ajabo on the team he can't contribute right now but eventually he'll be able to. But with Odell Beckham Jr., as far as wide receivers and whatnot, he he can't do anything for them right now. I mean, you could show them, like, you could go over film with them and stuff like that. But as far as his impact on the field, he can't do nothing right now because he's, he's recovering. So with Odell Beckham Jr., it's like, I don't know where he's going to go. And I, I don't know where he's going to go, and I do not know when he's going to get there. Because of that injury and the, the timing of it. Uh, it's, it's, it's just the worst, man. Like, like remind me of uh, Tybo, Tyus Bowser. Well, last game of the season. And on top of that, the Ravens lost too. But last game of the season, he tore his Achilles. And it's like, oh, man. Terrible timing. I mean, again, timing for injuries is always bad. But last game of the season. So, anyway, um, those have been some of the names that have been floating out there. Um, and then, of course, yeah, th then there's trade scenarios, too. There's trade scenarios. I know um, I know my guy Cole, he brought up uh, Marcus Calloway uh, from the Saints. Since the Saints right now got Jarvis Landry, Chris Olave, they, they got Michael Thomas still. Um, so he's talking about, yeah, Marquez Call Calloway. So that's another, uh, another possibility. Of course, we talked about DK Metcalf, and yeah, y'all know how I feel about that one with Spoke about Debo Samuel. Um, and there's been some people talking about, oh, not scary Terry. Because, you know, you know Terry McLaurin, he ain't going nowhere. Because why would I, I just would not see the, the commanders. Still got to get used to saying their name. Wouldn't see the commanders trading for a Carson Wentz. And then being like, all right, we traded for a quarterback. But you know what? We're going to take away that quarterback's best weapon. No. Nah. So Terry McLaurin, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't, he ain't going nowhere. So, uh, and then Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is another name that's been floating around. But Saints fans, they they told me they said, "Hey, Michael Thomas ain't going nowhere, nowhere." They say Jameis Winston about to be loaded. They say MT ain't going nowhere. I said, "Okay, cool, cool." But that would be another name that uh, that's that's actually been another name Ravens fans been talking about. Been talking about Michael Thomas for the longest. Um, and with his deal, when you look at the wide receiver deals right now, Michael Thomas' deal uh, is a steal. Um, so, yeah. But, again, like I said, I, I just want to hear from what you all think the Ravens should do, what direction you all think the Ravens should go in. Uh, and those are just everything that we just spoke of are just some different things that have been floating around out there, some different angles that people have been looking at it from. Um, I even had one guy, like, <laughs> I told him, I said, what, it's way too early for that, but 
He was talking about wide receivers coming out the draft in 2023. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, yeah, it's too early to be talking about 2023 draft, man. It's way too early for that. But he said he's just saying. Is there some talent coming out? Oh, no, man. We No, we on this year, man. We ain't trying to look ahead to the draft, man. I'm like, no, man. Come on, now. But anyway, so we'll see how things go. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for subscribing. Thank you all for just being you, man. I appreciate it a lot. We out.